This next graph we're going to draw or learn about is something called a stacked bar graph. A stacked bar graph is also used for bivariate data. Okay. And we're going to use the same problem. We're going to use our, our gender and food type example. Okay. The image we're looking for in this case is a stacked bar graph has two clusters, but the clusters are not side-by-side -side clusters. Now the cluster will be two, single, two or three single bars, and in this case the bars will be subdivided into pieces, okay. and then each of those pieces will have coloring in them. Okay. So if we take a look back at our cluster graph, okay, you've got these bars and these bars. Okay. To create a, cluster, a stacked bar graph, basically what we're going to do, we're going to take these four bars, we're going to leave the black one where it is, we're going to take the green one, pick it up and move it over and set it on top. Then we'll take the blue one, move it over and set it on top and the red one move it over and set on top. It's like a child who has four different colored blocks. They don't like them side by side. They want to see if they can stack them up as tall as they can on top of each other. And the same thing for males. So a stacked bar graph is much, it's, it's very, very vertical. Okay? Can be drawn horizontally, but I'm going to draw it vertical. It's going to change our scale some. So using these same numbers, let's see what we can do. Try to leave myself some space over on the left side, so I'm going to put my scale to be very, very long and not so wide. Okay. I think I went too far down. Let me. Okay, so just ignore that part. Now, on my frequency scale, what I have to do is since I'm stacking the bars up, I remember there were 10 females and 15 males. So I need to go up to a frequency of 15 on this scale rather than just 6 because I'm stacking all those bars up. So let's see what I can do. Let's say count by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So 16... I think that was 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 10, 6, and 2. Okay. A frequency need to be, I need to count by 2's instead of 1's because I, the bars are going to be stacked higher. So I'm not going to try, I'm not going to try to create the separate bars. I'm going to draw the bar the full length and then we'll chop it up into pieces. Okay. We'll draw the whole bar and then whack it up into pieces and color them. Okay. So, putting a gap over here, a generous gap because I got lots of room to work with. Okay. The female bar, the female bar, three, four, eight, ten. So I need to go up to ten on my scale, just here. So the female bar goes to there. Okay. I'll make it a little bit wider than usual. Okay. Then I'm going to skip over here and put the male bar. It has to go up to 15. That's 16. That's about 15. And then about 15 again. And we're going to top these off. So that's 10 and that's 15. And sometimes people put a number here. They'll put 10 and 15 just to tell what the top of them are. It can. It doesn't hurt. Okay. Now we need to chop it into pieces. 
We're going to put Chinese at the bottom, then American, then a Mexican, and Italian. Generally, the order here gets reversed as you go up. So, three ladies enjoyed Chinese. So, I go one, two, three. Okay. And then three plus one more. So, I go one more. So, I would go up to four to include that next lady. So, here's the first. The first three ladies cared for Chinese. Then one lady cared for American. That's three and one. Then four ladies cared for Mexican. So I'll go, I'm mean, counting by twos, two, four. So that would be Mexican. And the final two were Italian. Don't try to put numbers in here. They become, you're cluttering the graph. The breeder should be able to say, okay, this is four minus three is one. Okay. For males, there were two who liked Chinese, and then two and six would make it a total of eight, two, four, six, eight, and then four more. So that leaves two Chinese, six American, four Mexican, and three Italian. On a frequency scale, you can put an arrow, but on a data scale, you generally you don't have to put an arrow here. It's really your choice. Okay. Females. Male. Okay. Now it's time to put in the colors. Let me see. Looking back at our previous graph, we had black, green, blue, red. Black, green, blue, red. So, this would be black and black. Black, green. Blue, And finally red to top off our bars. Besides your title of favorite food type by gender, N equals 25. Okay. One of the practical uses for these two numbers is you know what the sample size is, but you're without telling the reader that, they would have to add them up. You can immediately tell your reader there were 10 females and there were 15 males. Okay. I need a legend. So over here, to, on the right side of my graph, I can put. And this, when you put a characteristic key, and in your key, put the color order in your key the same as the color order in your graph. Okay? This is Chinese. American. Mexican and finally Italian. If you reverse the color order here, it creates some confusion because they the reader is seeing the order here, but you reversed it there and it just creates confusion for your reader. This is your stacked bar graph. A little bit more challenging to make because you get, but you, you should start out by drawing the bar the full length based upon your your sample sizes of male, females and males, and then carefully, very carefully, chop it up into pieces 
making each the width the height of each separate bar equal to its frequency okay you can double check that okay Chinese should be three American is one so it has to be smaller Mexican is four so it's got to be bigger and then so on so it's a couple things to look for but be careful making this use a pencil get it right and then darken it in with pen or marker this is your stacked bar graph I think we got everything here.